Thank you for joining us, President. Well, thanks, Seth, for having me on. So you just took over the reins at uh, ISU, but you'd worked at Boise State University for a long period of time. Yes. What's it like? How's, how's Pocatello different than Boise? Well, Pocatello is a, another one of Idaho's great places to live, like Boise is one of Idaho's great places to live. So we've settled in there quite well. And uh, being at one of our sister institutions and being in the Idaho system of higher education for 20 years is a great uh, background for me to come to Idaho State University. So I've been able to pretty seamlessly come into Idaho State and begin working there and things are going pretty well. You're new at this job, but about a year from now, you're going to be one of the senior presidents. and You will be the senior president at the universities in Idaho. I mean, that's going to be kind of a, a shock. <laughs> well, uh, higher education in Idaho is, is changing. The State Board of Education is setting some definite standards regarding uh, systemness that we're going to come together, that it's about all of us. Idaho is a very large state geographically, but it's a very small state in population and resources. And at the end of the day, our higher education system is going to be better making sure we all work together. We're all coordinating for the best interest of our students. And I think in that sense, this is a great time for some of that change in higher education in Idaho, and it's gonna be beneficial for everybody. And as we start out on that change, maybe we should start at the beginning, uh, the kids actually coming into the university sure. system. Are, are they prepared for higher ed right now? Mm, good question. Um, many of them are. In fact, some might argue they're over-prepared given what we have in Idaho's dual enrollment. And, and some aren't quite yet prepared. And one of the real challenges of a university in Idaho or honestly anywhere is dealing with making sure you're ready to accept a student where they are when they come. Students come to higher education to better their lives. They're coming for lots of different reasons. It might be that they um, have always thought they wanted to go to college, it's a recent idea, or they have an idea of what they want to do, but at the end of the day, they're coming to try to better, th better their lives. And so we have to be prepared to work with that. Given the recent rise in advanced opportunities in Idaho and dual enrollment, we are seeing um, students come into higher education now with more credits but by the time they step onto the campus than they ever have before. And that causes us in higher education to change the way we approach that student and that freshman experience is very different. Where they go from there is different. But at the same time, we will have the student who comes in who doesn't have any advanced opportunity and is coming to us as a traditional freshman. And maybe they are even underprepared in certain areas and we have to get them there. So we have to make sure we're prepared for all of that. And that's what makes this time in higher education pretty critical because a few years ago in Idaho, dual enrollment existed, but it existed at, a, at an operational level. But over the last three few years, given what the legislature has done in the State Board of Education and school districts to uh, have a rapid increase in those advanced opportunities, we're now seeing two, three, four times as many credits coming into the university as we used to. And that's causing us to relook at how we deal with new coming students. Yeah, and you're teaching students in different places now. Right. You, you were saying that you have three times the amount of students that are now taking these dual credit classes as before. Right. Um, that means you're teaching in high schools. You're not just teaching on a university ca campus, and that's gotta be a different way of teaching. It is. Uh, we had this conversation just recently around the President's Council, which is all the college and university presidents in Idaho. What we're really looking at now in higher education is less about here's what you learn in high school and then you go to college or to a university and you learn this. The issue now is how are we as a state educating our 16 to 24 year olds and looking at that as one group because so many of those students are having that uh, college level coursework in high school and it's blending into what they do at the university that we have to look at that as a whole. It is no longer a hard and fast cutoff. You go to high school and then when you're done you move on into higher education. That makes us have to coordinate with what's going on at the high school level in ways we never had to before to make sure the rigor is there, right? Because that's also important. To make sure that when you take a class in high school that it has the same level of rigor and information so that you are prepared when you hit those upper division advanced or graduate level classes later. Um, the rigor had to be there in those original courses as well. So it's, it's also pushing us towards increased coordination with our high schools and school districts, which is also a positive. So if we do this right, it's about re-looking at the way we're educating our 16 to 24 year olds. 
Well, what's the goal then? I mean, is the goal to get that 16 and 24 year old into a job? Mm -hmm. Is it to give them the education that they want, make them a well-rounded citizen? Or is the goal just, you know, if they want to take basket weaving, they can take basket weaving and they're good. Right. Well, I guess the answer to that is almost yes, which isn't a good answer to a question like that. But um, there is definitely um, a push now, given the cost of higher education that is borne by the student. And if we roll back the clock 30 years when the state was paying for most of that education, um, it's a little different than when a student now is bearing a large part of the cost of the education. We owe it to that student to make sure that when they finish their education, they are ready for job, a career, and a lifetime of employment because um, they've paid for it. So we have to make sure they're ready. And in fact, the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities put out a paper um, in, I think it was late 2016, and it was a call to action. And it essentially was, I think the title of the report, if I remember, was called Ready for Jobs, Career, and a Lifetime. That we have a duty in public higher education to get those students ready for those jobs. That doesn't mean we're relieved of our duty of educating good citizens who have a broad-based education and can be um, ready for many different fields. But one of the things that is fantastic about Idaho State University is we also have a College of Technology. Uh, for those students you know, from Idaho who are looking for a job training, career training that ne isn't necessarily traditional higher education, those programs exist. And if you take it at the university, you have that option of taking that and you could also take other classes or courses or certifications or badges in particular programs that help you become more employable. And then at the same time, making sure that we are meeting the needs of business and industry. One of the things that I've been doing on campus is set up meetings between major employers in Idaho and our vice presidents and deans so that we can talk about what are your needs as an employer so we can make sure our graduates are the best situated they can be to get those jobs. What can put our students in the best position to land that job that's out there? And the only way I can do that is if I build an open dialogue between the university and those employers so that we know what they want. So I've been meeting with several major employers and local businesses to make sure we are meeting their needs because that's an important part of what we do. If the goal is to get people qualified to fill those jobs, should business have more skin in the game since you're doing all the training for those folks? Well, that's a question, that's a question that I would honestly, and this isn't dodging the question, leave to state policymakers. But here's my take on it. That's what we do in higher education. That's our role. We are. Uh, we serve a public mission and the state of Idaho has asked us um, get your students educated, get them ready for their careers, get them ready for their lifetime and they take some of the taxpayers hard earned money and send it to us to do that. To me it's not about whether I think the businesses should or shouldn't be part of that. I know that's our mission. That's our job. And that's what we should do because one, it does help. It drives the economy when we can produce a workforce that our local employers want to hire. It's good for those students to better their lives and it's us fulfilling our mission. And we seem kind of like we're at a crossroads right now. We've, you're new to your job. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have two new presidents at uh, University of Idaho, BSU. We've got a lot of college presidents that are new. We've got a new governor and we've got a task force that's looking into higher education. Right. What would be your advice? What, what do you want the university system to look like five years from now? Mm -hmm. Would you go all the way to you know, uh, a chancellor system like has been talked about? Or are, are you happy with the specialization of the universities? What would, what would you like to see changed? Well, one of the main things is it's not about whether we go to a chancellery system or whether you could call Idaho's system a system with a capital S or a small s. Because we in Idaho all report to the same State Board of Education. We are all working together. We are sister institutions. I would say this to you, I would say this to a legislator, I'd say this to any member of the public. I've been in Idaho's system for over 20 years. Inter-institutional rivalry and competition doesn't do any of us any good. Collaboration, cooperation, and moving towards a common goal is what we need. We are all public institutions. We are funded by the same public and we serve the same public. And serving that student need, that's our core mission. I don't view Idaho State University's competitor as the University of Idaho. 
I don't view Lewis Clark State College as our competitor. I don't view Boise State as our competitor. I don't view any of our community colleges as Idaho State's competitor. We are all working together with the same goal. I want to make sure every student who takes a class at the College of Eastern Idaho or College of Southern Idaho and wants to transfer into Idaho State University can do that seamlessly because that's what serves that mission. Five years from now then, if I say mm -hmm. that we were successful, what do we judge that on? If we hit those go on 60 rates, mm -hmm. is that success? If, uh, if wages go up, I mean we're, we're turning out a lot of kids but our wages are still really low. Mm -hmm. uh, if higher wages, mm -hmm. is that a sign of success? Like how would you judge the success of the higher education system when you're looking from like 20 years looking back sure. now? A lot of it would be in the go on rate. It would be ensuring that students throughout Idaho understand that they have a pathway to get the, to an education, to get to a better job, to better their lives. Um, one of the fantastic things that has come out of the expansion in dual enrollment and advanced opportunities is a student in a high school in Idaho who takes that class and is successful and realizes, well, wait a minute, I could do this, I did that work, I could go on to higher education, who maybe before didn't think they could do it or didn't think they could access it. Give them that toehold they need to push them on to go on. Increasing that go on rate is important. It's clear to me from all the studies I've read and in my time in higher education that advancement of higher education is good for the economy, it's good for your state, it eventually drives up wages, it drives up the standard of living. So increasing that um, go on rate would be the success measure as more students go on to higher education. And then I would finish that answer with this. I'm a product of Idaho's educational system. I would not be here as the president of Idaho State University if I did not have access to Idaho's public higher education system. I honestly believe I'm living proof that getting a higher education can change your life. And that's why I'm dedicated to that at the student level. Do you have enough money to accomplish that? Well, the state of Idaho, I think, if you look at what the governor's budget recommendation is this year, one of his big initiatives was uh, proposing a massive increase, a, a genuine increase into the amount of money going into the Opportunity Scholarship. That is trying to put money in the hands of students to choose a college, choose a university, and where to go. So the more we can fund that, the better we will be. Do I have enough money to accomplish all that right now? No. Will I ever have all that I wanted? No. But I know as we continue to invest as a state in higher education, the benefits will come back to us as it produces the more educated workforce to meet the needs of the modern economy. Well, hopefully 10 years from now, we can sit down and judge your success. Hopefully we can. <laughs> Thank you so much, President. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks.